New homes for Bun and MCP, GPT-5.2 is here, there are some serious React vulnerabilities, and some of the Download Crew's favorite picks of 2025. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. It is the end of the year. I've got my uh, holiday sweater on, but there is still tons of stuff happening in the dev world, so let's get into it. First up, let's talk about some major moves in the, the developer tooling space. So Bun, which is a JavaScript runtime that's designed to be a drop-in replacement for Node.js, and it's a project that we've mentioned several times over the years, it has been acquired by Anthropic. Now, Claude Code actually uses Bun under the hood, and that is part of the rationale behind the acquisition. In the announcement post on the Bun blog, Bun creator Jared Sumner lays out some of what will and won't be changing. Now, Jared says that Bun will remain open source under the MIT license, it will remain actively maintained and built in public on GitHub, and that the same team will be working on Bun. Now, what changes is that Bun will be shipping faster, it will be more closely integrated with Claude code, and hopefully be better utilized by other coding agents too. There's a link um, down below if you want to read the Bun team's full blog post. And, and just as an aside, I want to send my sincere congrats to Jared and the rest of the Bun team on this exit. Amazing work, and thank you for Bun. Speaking of Anthropic, can you believe that this month marks the first anniversary of MCP? I, I know, I feel like I've been using MCP forever too. Now MCP, or the Model Context Protocol, if you're not familiar, is an open protocol that allows LLMs and coding apps to communicate with external tools and data sources. And it's a big deal because you can let your IDE or custom AI app connect to other data sources or tools to get context to query your task. So MCP has been open source basically from the beginning, but now Anthropic has donated MCP to the Agentant AI Foundation, which is managed by the Linux Foundation. And so this is really great news. Now I've got a link down below to Anthropic's blog and the GitHub blog about this news, but also be sure to check out a video that we put out on GitHub about one year of MCP and how it went from a blog post to the Linux Foundation. In some security news, if you are using React, buckle up because there is a critical remote code execution or RCE vulnerability in React server components. Now, this vulnerability is known as React to Shell and it's already being exploited in the wild. Now, as far as vulnerabilities go, this one is as bad as it gets with, with a 10.0 rating and it impacts React.js and then there's another vulnerability that is specifically focused on Next.js. Now, Meta and Vercel, the maintainers of React and Next, have already issued patches, but then last week, the React team disclosed that they found two additional vulnerabilities in the React server components. Now, these vulnerabilities don't allow for remote code execution, but you, sh you should still patch anyway. If you have not updated the versions of React or Next.js and, and you use them in a project, do this now. I've got links down below for the latest information. Moving on to some happier news, GPT-5.2 is out and it's available in the GitHub uh, in, in GitHub Copilot in public preview. Now this is OpenAI's newest uh, model and it focuses on, on long context and front end UI generation. And I've been using it for the last week or so and I really, really like it. And, and it's crazy to think about like in the last month alone, we've seen new model releases uh, by the, the families at Claude, GPT and Gemini. What a time to be alive. Now, before I get into our final end of the year picks of the week, I wanted to take a moment to do a GitHub project spotlight, which is when we, you know, uh, basically pick a, a project on GitHub to show off. And this one comes from Tom Shaw, who is a software developer and a content creator. And he's a very nice guy. And I had the pleasure of meeting him at GitHub Universe. And Tom is also the author of a project called F1 Race Replay. And this is a Python application for visualizing Formula One race telemetry and then replaying the race events with interactive controls. And it's got a, a great graphical interface. This is very, very cool. And um, it, it's, he's actually added three new features to it recently. And, and those features include the driver tire information, driver telemetry insights, track status indicators. I really, really love projects like this, and, and I want to thank Tom for making it open source and sharing it with the world. So um, a link to that is going to be in the, the description down below. And now I want to share a few picks from the GitHub crew as we close out 2025. First is this pick from Andrea, and her pick is called Just a Job App, and this is how Andrea describes it. She says, you know how everyone starts a spreadsheet to track job applications and then they abandon it? Well, Just a Job App fixes that. You apply, you get a confirmation email, and your tracker updates automatically. No extensions, no copy pasting. It's built by job seekers for job seekers. No VC funding, and they've already tracked 3,000 applications. And 
and she's creating um, uh, the the creator of this is creating a very supportive community as well. So this is amazing work. I will have that link down below. We love this. And the next pick is from Pachi, and it is a project called Marmite. And this is how Pachi describes it. Uh, she says that it is such a simple blog generator, but for devs that always say, you know. I want to create my own blog and then they never really do and and pachi adds me i'm talking about myself and and, and it's great and and bruno uh the creator chose the name because he likes marmite and had a char nearby he's brazilian and lives in portugal so pachi doesn't know how he got it but we are appreciative and look as someone who also does indeed say i will create my own blog and then never does i need this in my life now as for me my pick is summer cart 64 which is a fully open source N64 flashcard. And this project is awesome, uh, especially uh, now that the Analog 3D is finally shipping and with other N64 consoles like the M64 on the horizon. And as somebody who just got an Analog 3D after two years of waiting, I actually pre-built, I, I, I bought a pre-built Summer Cart 64 off of AliExpress. Um, but if you've got the tools and the patience, you can make your own too. The whole project plus the firmware, and that's really important, is on GitHub. You know, flash cards are awesome if you want to not have to shuffle between dozens of Nintendo 64 cartridges or for homebrew titles that never got a physical release. And it works um, for, you know, things like the Analog 3D and on an original N64 hardware. I've, I've tested on both. Now, I've got links to all these projects in the links below. Please let us know your favorite projects of the year and your thoughts on any of the stories that we covered this week. Um, that's going to do it for me. If you like this episode, please do give us a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm. And subscribe to GitHub on YouTube for all of your nerd needs. Um, have Happy holidays, uh, take care of yourselves, and I will see you in 2026.